Returning to one of our top stories, and Dunkley candidates are making their final pitch to voters ahead of tonight's crucial by-election. Joining me live is Dr Zare Gazarian, Senior Lecturer at Monash University. Yes, a big day indeed, and you are in Melbourne as well. Labor is holding the seat of Dunkley with a margin of 6.3%. How is it looking in, in your... Uh, in your opinion, I mean, we've had uh, the stage three tax cuts uh, changed and certainly uh, that could place an impact. What do you think? Morning, Janie. Yes, this is going to be a very, very close election. People are expecting. I'd also expect this. Um, the margin that Labor holds the seat by is 6.3%. Now, this would be a usually very safe margin at a general election. We'd not expect this to change much or um, be in danger of being lost. But this is a by-election, and by-elections can throw up some really interesting and unusual results. And with the nation's focus being on Dunkley, um, this is going to be a real test of the Prime Minister's approach to uh, leading the government. It's going to be a judgment about the government's uh, approach to managing all the sorts of issues that have come up. It's also going to be a real test, Janie, of how voters are responding to Peter Dutton and the coalition's approach, especially that strategy of targeting outer metropolitan electorates. And talk us through the candidates, Nathan Conroy for Liberal and uh, Jodie Bellier for Labor. So um, the Labor candidate is Jodie Bellier and she has a relatively high public profile in the local community. And interestingly, Janie, she has positioned herself as someone who's not a career politician, but rather someone who's going to be an effective advocate for the local community. Um, and she has been, as I mentioned, a prominent figure in the Frankston community, as, of course, has the Liberal candidate, Nathan Conroy. Um, he is currently the mayor of Frankston City Council, so he's built a high public profile through that um, local government uh, uh, representation, overwhelmingly supported by the Liberal Party at the pre-selection for this contest. So he'll be able to use those local connections and that support within the party for campaigning. So both are locals and both are um, high profile. So it is very much a traditional um, local campaign where we have local candidates leading the major parties. It will be interesting, won't it, for Frankston because they generally favour Labor, but with Nathan Conroy being the mayor and running for Liberal, how do you think that could potentially increase votes? This is a really interesting part. So for the Liberal Party to win, they must improve their result in areas such as Frankston, Seaford, Carrum Downs. These are electorates and booths within the uh, electorate of Dunkley. These booths were not won by the Liberal Party at the last election. So to be able to win this seat, the Liberals must firstly hold on to their strong results in Mount Eliza, but also be able to chip away at that um, strength of the Labor Party's vote in those booths of Frankston, Seaford and Caram Downs. If they're unable to do that, then the Labor Party will be able to hold on. And how much of an impact do you think the changes to the stage three tax cuts are going to be? Because there's the, the moral side and the financial side, isn't there? Generally, I think the stage three tax cuts have been accepted by voters. Some would be upset um, that they wouldn't be receiving as, as much as they had been promised. Others would be uh, pleased that they'd be receiving more than they thought they would be. But generally, I think this has provided an opportunity for the coalition, the opposition, to really hit the government hard um, and to question the government's capacity to deliver their promises. But I think that politically has been the most significant thing, that it's given the opportunity for the coalition to critique, to criticise the Labor parties and the Labor government's ability to maintain election promises. So it's a tight contest, but if we see a decent swing on either side, what are we looking for here? How crucial is this? This is a really important election. Um, looking at the numbers in the House of Representatives, the Labor Party currently holds 78 seats. If it loses this seat, it goes down to 77. Remembering we have a 151 seat chamber, so any party to be in government must have at least 76 seats. So it becomes, the, the uh, comfort margin in the House becomes really, really low. So for the Labor Party, the stakes are high. 
it's it's also very um, important to remember that the stakes are high for the coalition as well. The uh, Peter Dutton Liberal Party has made a real point about campaigning in outer metropolitan electorates. This is going to be the test. If they are unable to attract voters in a seat like Dunkley, then many in the Liberal Party would start to be a bit nervous about their prospects of being able to uh, win over marginal seats, um, electorates at the next general election, which of course can be held between August this year and May next year. So it is a high stakes game for both the Labor Party in government as well as the opposition. If Labor lose this, how much pressure is there on Anthony Albanese's role as Prime Minister? There will be growing uh, pressure on Albanese, definitely. Um, it is, of course, as a Prime Minister, he has um, the hopes of the Labor Party on his shoulders. And if he's unable to get support or to maintain support in a crucial seat like Dunkley, um, there will be growing pressure and some nerves within the Labor Party about their prospects of being able to hold on to government at the next general election. Well, I believe that uh, Labor, sorry, Liberal has to win 15,000 more votes to win. Is that correct? Well, they have to win a, a big chunk of those undecided voters. Mm. So they've got to they've got to increase their primary vote, um, which at the last election was pretty poor. It was just 32 and a half percent. So to have any chance of winning this seat, it must go up by at least eight to ten points, which is a significant chunk of voters. Dr Zara Gazarian, Monash University Senior Lecturer, thank you as always for your time and expertise. A big day ahead. It will be interesting to see the outcome. Thanks we'll have so you on much, again Andy. soon. Thank you.